Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another Transformers review. But before I get started, I need you guys to do me a favor. If you're watching this video right here and are not a subscriber of Patriot Prime Reviews, please hit that subscribe button right now. It won't cost you a thing, but will help me and my channel out tremendously. Also, make sure and visit my sponsor, ToyHacks.com. ToyHacks provides reproduction and upgrade decal sets for Transformer toys from Generation 1 to the latest modern figures. Make sure and stop by the ToyHacks Armory, where they can equip your figures with new weaponry in multiple colors, and Toy Stages provides backdrops for figure displays and photography. Each purchase with Toy Hacks earns you RoboSets that can be used for future purchases. You can check your balance anytime in your cart. Toy Hacks is a company run by collectors for collectors. So check out ToyHacks.com and make your collection stand out from the rest. And tell them Patriot Prime sent you. Now, on to the review. Product ordered. Item received. Wallet depleted. Featured bot. Transformers War for Cybertron Siege. Omega Supreme. Now, this is a big bot, and anytime I have a big bot to review, I always need some help. And my guest reviewer for tonight is Dylan's Toy Box. So you can check him out on Dylan's Toy Box here on YouTube. Now, I originally missed out on Omega Supreme when he was first released last year. He got recently re-released, and I jumped all over the chance to finally add one to my collection. Taking a quick look at the packaging, you've got Omega Supreme right here in some fantastic artwork. I mean, Dylan, what do you think of that big Autobot? Well, that is really cool. That Autobot looks like he can beat all the Decepticons, and also, he looks like he's unstoppable, but... I forgot. Is his name Mega Supreme? Omega Supreme. Oh, okay. So he, Omega Supreme. Omega right? Supreme. You are right. Okay. So you got Omega Supreme attacking some Decepticons here on the front. The side of the box features the Autobot arc. This side of the box features the Siege artwork. And the back of the box shows Omega Supreme in robot mode, rocket base mode, tank mode, and he also comes with a little mini-con, or not mini-con, MicroMaster countdown. So now, without further ado, let's get this mighty Autobot opened up out of this packaging and check him out. So let's get him open here. All right, Omega out. Come on. Hey, you want to pull on this side, get him out of there? Yeah. Oh my goodness. All right, yeah. so there we've got Omega Supreme. He is packed in robot mode, and he is a big figure. Really big. Yeah, really big. Now you've got, like let's see, so I can stand up here. There is, he comes with a lot of blast effects and little Autobot countdown right there. What? Autobot countdown? Yeah, he's got a little Autobot right there, see? Oh, That's yeah. That's his buddy. He also comes with a sheet of instructions that pretty much unfolds into a poster and as what? usual these instructions are very well illustrated and very easy to follow so now let's take a closer look at omega supreme and welcome to, to patriot, patriot prime, prime reviews, reviews. Now, first off, we're going to take a look at Omega Supreme's little MicroMaster buddy, Countdown. Countdown here turns into some kind of moon buggy or communications buggy and is a fairly simple little transformer. He's got great molded detail all over, but that's about it. No real paint applications whatsoever. He does have a radar dish that can move up and down, so he's got that going on for him. And he's got four rolling wheels that actually 
roll really good. He zips right across the table there. Now, an issue with the wheels, though, if you look, the rear wheels are pinned in where the front wheels are just clipped on. And this wheel right here, when they first opened up Omega, the wheel was off and banging around inside the box. So when I opened up the packaging, this fell out, and I was like, oh, shit, Omega's dropped a gear or a ratchet broke, and then I saw Countdown in there missing a wheel, realized what it was, popped it right on, and there we go, no problem whatsoever. Now, here is Countdown with his Generation 1 counterpart, and actually, I think the Generation 1 Countdown looks a little better. He's got more paint applications. Now, the wheels are toy hacks, of course, but I don't know. I just think the G1 looks better. Now, Countdown here has a third mode, according to the instructions. If you lift the front sections up slightly, bring the radar dish back, and then move these sections forward a little bit, so they're kind of leaning against the front like so. Flipping the figure over, you're going to take this peg, flip it out, and now you're supposed to set this on top of Omega's shoulder, and I guess it's some sort of communications array. So, <laughs> I think that's a little lame. I may show it off when I review Omega. I may not. So, continuing on with transformation, go ahead and flip the front of the vehicle all the way around. That will form Countdown's legs. Bring these sections forward, which are the arms. Flip that peg back in. Take the radar dish. Fold back against his back. And there is Countdown in robot mode. And he is not a bad-looking robot at all. Once again... Lots of great molded detail and a surprisingly good face paint application there. He's got the blue eyes, silver face, lots of details. I mean, he's, he's really very well detailed for a MicroMaster. And of course, here he is with G1 Countdown. Transformation is exactly the same, except you don't fold down the radar dish. Flip these around and there you go. Once again, I think I like the G1 Countdown a little better. I just think his collars pop a lot more. So there you go, guys. There is Omega Supreme's MicroMaster Countdown. Now let's take a look at Omega Supreme's tank mode. And I love this tank. This thing is big and beefy and just looks awesome. Great paint applications, got a fantastic Autobot logo right there, silver right along the sides, and look at the detail on this guy. The molded detail is fantastic. Even down here on the treads, they look great. I mean, this tank looks like it could do some serious damage. And that leads into all of the blast effects that Omega Supreme came with. He came with a handful You've got a big giant blast effect here that pegs into this other blast effect there. Let's see. Actually, let's see. To make a big old explosion, you got the big one, pegs into that one, then pegs into this one here, then this little one here. Actually, I'm getting all confused. I need instructions for these blast effects. There we go. So you got this going on, and then he has three of these little ones that are exactly the same. So once you get these stacked just right. You've got this huge, massive blast effect that you can plug right into the main cannon. <laughs> that looks awesome. He also has these little cannons here on the side. These can raise up just like so, and you can also plug the extra blast effects in right there. And now Omega Supreme is really raining down some hell on some Decepticons. Now, this tank mode does have one major flaw. Let me get these blast effects off. Is that the turret, it can raise up and down, but it cannot rotate. And that's pretty lame for a tank. And the reason being, right there, that is Omega's head that goes right up against the turret. Now, if Omega's head was not there, the turret does spin around, but that's for transformation. And of course, Omega's head can turn also in robot mode, but when they're combined together in tank mode, no such luck, he is facing forward. So I guess if a Decepticon comes at him from the side or the back, Omega's screwed. Now another cool thing that this tank mode can do is raise these 
weapons up here, lift the turret up slightly, and grab the sides. You can flip this up, and there is a storage area for Countdown. He fell to the side. He, he was knocked loose. There's little pegs right here that you can put Countdown in. It kind of holds him into place. So he can carry Countdown into battle, so Countdown can take off to communicate issues to the Autobots. But that's pretty cool. You can use Countdown or any other MicroMaster. And if you want to, do uh, a base mode with Omega. Just lift these all the way up. Lift the turret all the way up. And now you have a little base mode for Omega Supreme, like a little secondary base. I mean, if you think about it, that's all G1 bases were, were a couple towers and some ramps. So you got that going on. But other than the turret that doesn't rotate, this tank is awesome. And like I said, it is huge. Here he is compared to Kingdom Warpath. So you have him compared to a more modern tank. And also I have a Generation 1 Omega Supreme. So you can see the comparisons there. Now, of course, the G1 Omega Supreme was electronic. He had lights and he could move on his own. You flip the switch here. There he goes. The turret's rotating. My God, that's loud. So you've got that going on. Flashing lights. And, of course, the G1 has a rotating turret where this one doesn't. So there you go, guys. There is Omega Supreme's tank mode. And here we have Omega Supreme in base mode, and this thing is massive. Well, the massive portion is this rocket, and this thing is unreal. This is almost a spear. And check out the details on this. This looks great. Far cry from the original Generation 1 rocket. Great molded details all throughout, and even up here at the top, there is... A little hatch you can open up and you can put a MicroMaster in here to command the rocket ship. So a really cool looking rocket. Now taking a closer look at the base, let me take the camera off here. The base itself is also fairly impressive. It's got lots of great details and this base really works with MicroMaster figures. As you can see I've got a, quite a few MicroMasters all around the base. There in the command center up here on top. And you can get an idea of how big it is because I've got Jetfire and Siege Optimus Prime there on the side. There is some ramps right here that you can utilize to drive your MicroMasters up or they can connect to bases. Though I'm not sure how a base is going to fit inside there. Now here on the side you have these little section here that can open up. And there's like a little garage on the inside, so you can park a MicroMaster vehicle, if you will, and seal that up. There's also little ramp connectors right here. Get that opened up. So if you have a MicroMaster or BattleMaster or ramp figure, I can't remember what these are called, like sound barrier here. I cannot do this with one hand. Anyway, he could connect to that port right there. So you can add more bases to Omega Supreme. Right up here, he does have rocket pods. He got medium-sized rocket pods there and smaller rocket pods on the side. This thing looks great. This is a very impressive base. Now, my one complaint with the Omega Supreme base is that the tank, which if you remember from Generation 1, would patrol around the base, this tank is way too big for the amount of track that you have. I feel like there should be a little bit more added to make this track longer to work with Omega Supreme. He's just, he's too big for that track. He's better off patrolling along the outside and letting the MicroMasters do their thing around the base. So here we have Generation 1 Omega Supreme in his base mode compared to the new Siege version. And as you can see, the track to base ratio works so much better with the Generation 1 figure. Plus, the G1 also has electronics. Now, cross your fingers that this works because this is an original G1 and it's a little wonky. So, let's see. There we go. That is glorious. 
and he got stuck on the background. But you get it, you understand. Now, of course, Siege Omega Supreme makes up for his lack of track with the size of his rocket. There's so many jokes right there. So now, let's get Omega Supreme transformed into robot mode. The Transformers will return after these messages. And the first thing you're going to do is take the rocket here. And along the rocket, there are these little panels that you're going to flip up like so. And then bring this section up and around, folding these panels back in, just like so. This will become Omega Supreme's arms. But thanks to Toy Hacks, I discovered there is a hidden mode here. So if you take these sections and fold them back like so, bring these back, leave your arm or the claw section here, fold this in, rotate this part around, bring the rocket part up like so, and then open up the door, and that pops right off. You gotta watch for that. Okay, that door right there pops off really easy. You do want to make sure that there is clearance right there. That just barely makes it over the lip. So if you don't have that section fully extended, that door is going to pop off every time. So now you've got this going on. So you have a little Omega Supreme substation, if you will. Make sure and flare these out. That way... It's stable. Now let's see here. So you've got that going on. Now I'll get more into that base mode later on because Toy Hacks designed a decal set that actually turns that into like Countdown's base. Now let's move on to the tank. Now, to transform Omega Supreme's tank into his torso, what you're going to do is take the tank and lift these turrets up, and then fold these down, like so. You're going to take the main body of the tank and fold it in half. So it's going to separate just like this. Bring that down. You see the little white clips right there that will match up to that slot. It's on a double joint right here or a double hinge, fold that around, and it will clip into place. So now you've got this going on. You're going to lower the ramp area, bring Omega's turret, spin it around, and then just bring it, make sure it faces back like so, and you're going to rotate this section down just like that bringing this chest section for Omega Supreme out, and then bring this back up. Well, one more thing. I forgot, you gotta bring these secondary turrets down, like so, and they're gonna be at a slight angle. Once you get Omega locked in here. There we go, I'm doing that wrong. You tuck the turrets right there right there in those little slots then bring up this section here clip those in and there you have Omega's chest and head section also on the back of the tank you've got this little cannon you're gonna flip out so it looks just like the generation one toy so now we'll connect this to the body of Omega Supreme Okay, now to transform Omega Supreme's body, we're going to the main base itself, and you need to remove the tracks. They just pop right off, just like so. They actually peg on just like the ramps from all the other bases here with the Siege and Earthrise line. So go ahead and get both of those off. And then what you're going to do is you fold these track sections in, or these stabilizers in rather and then just fold the track in half and that forms Omega's wing you're gonna have this little section sticking out right there this here on the other one 
too easy. I wish G1 did that. So put those off to the side. Now you're gonna take the main base of Omega and the first thing you're gonna do is right here under the crotch, you got this little stabilizer foot. Push that down, rotate these down. My goodness, oops, I forgot. There's a MicroMaster in there. Hitching a ride. So anyway, get those down. Listen to those ratchets. And there is Omega's legs. Now right here, you've got those ramps from base mode. Just fold those in. Fold those in and around the leg. They will actually snap in place. And now, take the waist, do a 180, and there you have Omega's body. Let me get the camera up for you. Now you're going to take the tank section that we've already transformed and you're going to slide that into this cavity right here. There is a clip, or actually a little peg right there, that's going to line up to that clip. So you just get that slid in and now lock into place. Bring this section up, snap that into place, and bring these shoulder panels down. Now we're going to attach the arms, rotate Omega around. Here's our rocket section from earlier. It's kind of got this half moon shape right here, as you see, matches up with that. There is a little spring-loaded peg that's going to lock this into place. You want to make sure this black section is perfectly flat. Just slide that in right there. Let's see. Yeah, I am doing something wrong here. Oh, double hinge. I told you to make sure it's flat. I didn't get it flat all the way. So there's a double hinge right there. There we go. Extend that out. So now you see there's nothing right there to catch. Now it'll slide into place. Boom. And that snaps in and is really secure. So now you're going to bring this section up. And right here, you see these slots? That's where the wings are going to go. Make sure and line up the right one. Let's see. Here we go. That little slot right there slides right in there. And that locks into place. Same on the other side. Come on now. There's always that one. Actually, he's in all the way. He just didn't snap. So now, there is these two little slots right there that'll match up to these pegs. You want to get those lined up. Peg those in. So now we have Omega all together. Now, you're going to take the arm, extend that out, rotate down and around. Same with the rocket tip. Bring that out. Take the tip. Press that in. Rotate the arm around, and there we have Omega Supreme transformed. One other thing, I always forget this, you can take the head and extend it up, giving him a little bit of a neck, and there you have Omega Supreme. And let me just tell you guys, this figure is awesome. Great detailing all the way around. I mean... Great paint applications, great articulation. I mean, arms can do a complete 360 if it wasn't for the wings. And just listen to those glorious ratchets. Arms can do a complete 360. They can go up, they can go down. There is a bend at the elbow and a rotation right there at the wrist. And also, there's a lot of articulation here in these claws, and they're on a ratchet. At least the top knuckle is so those ratchet at the top and then eh, they're tight but i wish these would ratchet as well also these are clear plastic except for the very tip not a big fan of the clear plastic i don't know why they did that but 
it is what it is. Same with this arm, elbow bend, in and out, full 360, and there is, I thought there was, no, no rotation on this arm. Waist, there is a waist rotation. Legs, man, it's hard to do. Up, about yay far. Legs can go back. There is a knee bend, and legs can go out, and an ankle tilt. So great articulation for this guy. Now you can also incorporate the blast effects with Omega. You can put the blast effects here that we showed in tank mode right there in his rocket hand. Now I should have showed this off in rocket mode. You can attach that to make it look like the rocket's flying through space. But here we have him blasting you with his claw hand or blasting you with his blaster hand. And he also has two little guns right here. So you can attach those little blast effects. So he's really opening up fire on you now. Take these off. Now what's surprising is the little head cannon here is not blast effect compatible. So I find that kind of odd. And oh yeah, the head can do a complete 360 as well. Can look up and down slightly. And that's about it. Now he also has these little blast effect ports. That they probably should have showed off in base mode, but you got little ports here and here. So it can look like he's getting shot up here on the wrist. And being a siege figure, he's not really covered in all that battle damage. He does have a little burn sections around these ports, but it's not as bad as the sloppy paint applications on that crappy battle damage the siege figures had. Another complaint I have with the guy, oh, didn't mean to bump the camera there. I don't like that clear chest piece, but it is what it is. I do like how you can flip these sections up here and reveal the missile pods from base mode. And one final thing, he also has light piping. If I can get this to work, maybe. Oh yeah, he's got a little slot up there that if the light can get in just right, you got some pretty decent light piping. All in all, a great figure, and I'm so glad I finally got one. And now for some quick size comparisons, here is Transformers War for Cybertron Siege Omega Supreme with Generation 1 Omega Supreme. And let's see if his electronics still work. I can't remember if this guy could walk or not. Sometimes the gears are stripped. So let's see. Oh. <laughs> He's walking like me from Saturday nights back in the 90s. So there you go, there's, C, there's Generation 1 Omega Supreme. War for Cybertron Siege Jetfire. His good buddy, Combiner Wars Devastator. And fellow Autobot Titan, Generations Metroplex. Transformers War for Cybertron Siege Titan Omega Supreme is an awesome figure, and I'm so happy I finally got my hands on one. There is so much playability with this guy, it is ridiculous. Especially with all the little hidden modes that I've discovered. And, I mean, I love him. He is awesome and a great update to the original Generation 1 toy. My only complaints are really minor. I wish he had more track, and I'm not a big fan of the clear plastic. But other than that, this guy is perfection. And, oh yeah, there's Countdown as his little whatever mode. So there you go guys, War for Cybertron Siege Omega Supreme. So, does a Transformers War for Cybertron Siege Omega Supreme belong in your collection? Absolutely! This is a fantastic figure. I absolutely love this guy and I cannot believe I waited so long to pick one up. I only have a few minor complaints with him. One is the fact the turret for the tank, it really should have been able to rotate. And I think his rocket base mode is a little compact. It works better as a MicroMaster base instead of the tank rolling around on top of it like the original figure. But man, other than that, this guy is fantastic and he comes highly 
highly recommended if you could find one. As of this recording, he's still available at Amazon.com, Big Bad Toy Store, and Entertainment Earth. Anything you want to add? Well, this is a microbot, and it is his buddy, and he's pretty cute. Yes, he does come with Countdown, which is another issue. I feel that he may have, should have come with something maybe at least deluxe size, but considering how the MicroMasters can interact with this guy a little bit better, that's fully understandable. Now, guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, don't, don't forget, forget to subscribe, subscribe and, and don't, don't forget, forget to, to hit that bell icon to get notified when I upload new reviews. Once again, this is Patriot Prime. Signing out. And who are you? Who are you? Dillis Toy Box, signing out too. Hoo-ah! Hoo-ah!